Hey guys, what's up? Excoundrel here, and welcome to my next 5v5 video for Vainglory. Looking at the jungle, the minions, the monsters, the, the buffs, all the bits and bobs that the jungle comes with. And we're also going to look at some specific jungle pathing that we could use when 5v5 releases. Now, just as a note, this is the pre-release alpha version, not the golden ticket version that you'll see in 2.12, and not the version, or certainly not the version, that you'll see on release in February. So things that I say here are subject to change, and if they do change, I will update my videos. The first camp that you're going to see, and it's a warm and welcome face, is the healing Treon camp. It's going to be a Treon and a small minion next to him or her, and essentially it does exactly the same thing it does in the Halcyon Fold. It just gives you that energy and health buff that you're used to and you know. There are four camps on the map, all of which are on the outer jungle, so you can see them highlighted there with the little Treon figure. There are two generic minion camps, and when I say generic minion camps, I mean two dudes that literally just give you gold. Like the double camps in Vainglory, they are just filler camps, they don't do anything special, they are there just for you to farm. So again, something that you will have seen in Halcyon Fold, the two doubles, they are here in Sovereign's Rise as well, and all they do is provide you with a bit of gold. There is the Gold Toad. Now, <laughs> I know I've put a bit of a meme image up there, it's not going to be Toad from Mario, it's currently a Triant, it is supposed to be a Battle Toad model, which will be there on release I believe. The benefit of the Gold Toad is it's a safe camp, it's right at the back of your jungle, it's very hard to counter jungle it, and it provides you with a significant bounty of gold, 200 at the moment, which is double what the buff camps are worth, and significantly more than the Healing Triant and the Double Minion camps are worth. There is also the CP Triant, or the CP Monster, because it might not be a Triant when the game releases, and this currently provides a boost to your CP, what it says on the tin. CP Treon provides you with a boost to your CP. It is a vulnerable camp though, it is right at the front of the jungle near the river, so easier to counter jungle than pretty much any other camp in the jungle. There is the, obviously, the opposite, the weapon power monster. This provides you with a buff to your weapon power and currently provides you with a small slow um, on basic attack, so allowing weapon power junglers who might not have as much in their kit to help them gank, it provides them just with just a little bit extra. So that's currently what the uh, weapon power camp does. And obviously there is Black Claw and Ghostwing. Black Claw is, is essentially the Kraken. You take Black Claw, he flies into mid lane, and he pushes down the mid lane turrets for you. He's a really, really powerful tool and scales up as the game goes on. I'll talk about how the jungle camp scale a little bit later. And there is also Ghostwing. Ghostwing is the buff that spawns at 15 minutes, or rather the camp that spawns at 15 minutes, and when you take him, he provides you with an out-of-combat regeneration bonus to both your health and energy, and gives your entire team a shield, and that shield regenerates out of combat, but also stays present when you engage in a fight, so he's supposed to be the team fight game-ending tool that you take after 15 minutes in the game. So, those are all the camps. Uh, I'll replace the funny sprites with just some circles, so it's easier to see. All the buff camps, which are the weapon power and CP uh, power or CP triants, spawn at 55 seconds. 10 seconds later, the rest of the camps will spawn, which includes the gold toad, the healing triants, and the generic minion dudes. Uh, Black Claw spawns at 7 minutes 30 and Ghostwing spawns at 15 minutes. The significance of this is that the buff camps spawning earlier is supposed to push you towards starting at one of your buffed camps to then allow you to expand around the jungle and not waste any time. The other side, the flip side of this, is that it makes them slightly easier to invade early on. So if you want to take your entire team and steal away a buff camp on first rotation from your enemy especially the CP camp, which is very close to the river, you can actually run in and take that very early on and then still get back to one of your camps by the time or just after they've spawned. So you actually lose very little time in terms of your own clear by trying to take away one of the enemy uh, sort of buff camps at the very start. So it's, uh, it's important noting about these timers, but realistically, the, them spawning earlier, it kind of gives you some incentive to start at those buff camps, and then you move round to another camp spawning 10 seconds later, just so it makes your jungle clear that much more efficient. The premise would be to start your CP Trion because it's the most risky, and then you rotate around the jungle because it's easier that way. You then probably back and then head towards your other side of the jungle to get a full clear. But I'll explain that in a bit more detail later on. 
So let's have a look at the respawn timers. Uh, the buff camps take 160 seconds to respawn, which is 2 minutes 40. The small camps take 100 seconds, which is 1 minutes 40. Black Law is 180 seconds after he has been killed by the enemy team, not after the time that you capture him, because he doesn't actually die when you capture him. After his death, which is when the enemy team kills him, it's 180 seconds, so 3 minutes after he has been killed in the lane. And Ghostwing is 240 seconds after you have killed him. Uh, obviously, he doesn't join the battle, so as soon as you kill him, uh, he's going to give you that 4-minute respawn timer, 240 seconds. So, the significance of this is that for slower junglers, you'll probably find that you can give away your healing treants on the opposite side of the jungle... Um, to your laner to give them an experience boost simply because by the time that you get there it will have respawned for faster junglers you'll find that you can clear the jungle and get back to your first camp um, just after or as it's respawning so it's going to be really dependent on the clear speed of the jungler that you choose um, but again also keeping timers of those jungle camps is much more important in 5v5 because a especially with scout cams you can try and get counter jungling on the timers of your enemy camps and b it's really good for you to predict your rotations having a look at the gold camp uh the, the camps at the, the the gold worth buff camps are worth 100 gold healing camps are worth 80 double camps are worth 80 and gold toad is worth 200 so a full clear on your side of the jungle only is going to net you a total of 560 gold so 560 gold in total in that clear and then if they respawn on average every two minutes you're going to be getting about 1200 gold not including not including ganking lanes every four minutes so the gen general gold income of a jungler is going to be 1200 gold every four minutes or about 300 gold a minute which is fairly similar to what you see on halcyon fold obviously that's going to increase if you gank lanes and if you get kills as it stands, unlike in 3v3, the gold income per camp does not scale with the level of the camp. So in Halcyon Fold, the doubles and the healing treants, their gold income goes up as the game goes further. In 5v5, there are no plans for that to happen, simply because things like the gold treant is worth, or the gold toad, is worth a lot already. Um, this may change as we get towards live, but as it stands right now, there is no gold scaling for the camps. That is going to be the income for a full clear throughout every stage of the game. The last thing that we should mention about all of the jungle camps, and also Black Claw and Ghostwing, is the fact that they gain levels as the game progresses. It is based on the game time in minutes, it's not based on hero levels or anything like that. It is a calculation based on the game time in minutes. This is much like the Halcyon Fold. Every level that a jungle camp or a neutral objective gains means they get an increase in health and an increase in damage. And that can be through their ability damage for the likes of uh, Black Claw and Ghostwing or just the straight up basic attack damage that you receive from the neutral or the jungle camps. The calculation is game time in minutes divided by two plus one rounded down to the closest whole number. So if we take an example... 10 minutes into the game, 10 divided by 2 is 5, plus 1 equals level 6. The max level for all camps and Black Claw and Ghostwing is level 12. To achieve level 12, you would have to be at probably 23 minutes or 22 minutes, which would give you 11 plus 1. So at 22 minutes into the game, you get 11 plus 1, which is 12. Quick math. And that will give you the maximum level of all of the jungle camps so at 22 minutes all jungle camps will hit their maximum damage output and maximum health so you can see that that's kind of uh, SEMC putting down a marker saying we expect the game to be ending between 25 and 30 minutes because again all of the neutral jung uh, jungle camps and all of the neutral objectives gain their maximum level around that point in the game so I was going to show you some very simple jungle pathing but when I started to do some tests on the new basically they've updated the new client vox and varrier bots decide that they want to jungle and they go and steal away the entire top side of my jungle and then just stand there for the duration of the game so i'm going to show you some very limited jungle pathing based on the experience values of the camps that uh that are there there are two ways for you to get a very early level two gank it involves you having to take a buff triant and another camp on the map. So you can either start at the healing triant on the bot side and go to the red triant 
and then gank mid. Or you can start at the red treon, take the gold treon or the healing treon, and then gank mid or bot. So what I mean by this is that if you start at the healing treon, you have 10 seconds to then decide where you want to move next. If you want to go mid, you can go straight towards the gold treon, and you can take the gold treon, hit level 2, get the level 2 power spike on your hero, and then look to gank mid straight away. It's a very, very early gank. You can put a lot of pressure in the mid lane and maybe even net yourself a kill. The only drawback of this is if you don't take the healing treon, especially if your hero doesn't have any inbuilt lifesteal in their kit, you do go quite low because the, the buff treon and the gold treon hit pretty pretty gosh darn hard and it actually involves me having to use my flask it's not a, ba a bad thing to use your flask early on the earlier that you use it the more likely that you're going to uh, get it back and ready but you can see here i'm level two i'm no one's in the mid lane right now because this is bots but i got there at about one minute 40 and it was a good time to maybe put some level 2 pressure down. You can do the same thing and probably not have to burn your flask, but you won't get as much gold by going for the healing treon, then to the, we uh, the weapon power treon, and then going mid. You can do the same thing by doing the top side of the map and doing the double camp and going to the CP Treon and then going straight mid. That's actually safer and you take less damage. And also if you're a CP carry in the jungle, you're going to get that CP buff. So you can do both of those um, things and, and that will allow you to make a very early level 2 gank mid. You can also go for the CP Treon straight to the healing Treon and do a level 2 gank top. So there's lots of ways for you to get just two camps and then find the most efficient path into a lane. That's if you want to do a level 2 gank. But let's show you what the pathing could look like if you wanted to just straight up farm. There are lots of ways uh, that you can do this, but I would recommend if you're going to be a farming focused jungler, and what I mean by a farming focused jungler is I mean a jungler that is dedicated to basically clearing their jungle on rotation, you want to do it as healthily as possible. Um, so I'm going to start at the bottom healing treants and clear systematically through my bottom side of the jungle. So I'm going to take the healing treants followed by the weapon power treant, followed by the gold treant or the gold toad, and then move up to the top side of the jungle, go for the CP treant, the double camps, the healing treant, maybe look for a gank, maybe look for some counter jungling. If not, I'm going to back and reset the whole process. Now, you may ask why I'm dancing back and forth when I'm uh, attacking Treon, so when I'm attacking jungle camps, especially as Koshka, uh, what it is, I'm trying to basically cancel the basic attack animation of the uh, jungle camp, and that means that you can weave in movement between your own basic attacks, which allows you to take less damage from the jungle camps. It's something that you'll see a lot of League of Legends players do, and basically you kite the jungle camp because you can do that a bit more effectively in 5v5 compared to 3v3, and it means you just take a little bit less damage because you cancel the basic attack animation of the uh, the neutral uh, jungle monster and then that allows you to then reposition and weave in your basic attack so what you do is you basic attack you kite backwards you get them to move then you land your basic attack and then you do the same thing over again so you can see here what i've done is i've, I've completely cleared the bottom side of my jungle if vox and varia weren't the static random junglers in this current build i would then be able to clear the top side of my jungle systematically i could go for the double camps into the cp treon into the healing camp or i could go for the cp treon into the double camps into the healing treon uh, really depends on how much health I had. I always have the backup of my healing flask as well if I need it. So, um, again, that's always there. Unfortunately, I can't show you the full clear here because Vox and Varia already cleared it. Um, thank you, really helpful bots. But yeah, so those are the two types of jungle clears from the very basic get-go that you can use. Either you go for the level 2 gank in a lane or you go for the full clear. Remember, you just need a buff camp and a single other camp to get yourself level 2. And most heroes spike at level 2 for the simple reason that you get access to both of your abilities. This has been a very early look at the jungle, providing you with some stats and figures, as well as some potential jungle pathing. I'll do a greater jungle pathing video um, in the future when, obviously, I get more opportunity to when there are more people playing 5v5. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, feel free to, to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.